before dawn, they loading you up. You're on a bus full of guys that's dealing with the same fate as you. I felt my freedom being taken away. And, and I knew that was my fate. I had to draw from within. Either I had what it took to survive, or I didn't. And fortunately, I'm here today to tell you I survived. You see what you made out of, for real, because you're gonna be put to the test. But they played, they didn't play their age group, yeah, they played a mm -hmm. women's league. You're not? Nope. Come on, go ahead. I don't like the buddy. You didn't even eat half. It's too ugly. Oh my God. Too and okay, go. did you yeah. even take a bite? Nico won't eat well. Hey. Got some salad, because I'm not throwing it out. Did you even take a bite? Save this. Well, Sophia's got to eat some. If you could, uh, Mr. Debbie Rooks, Tennessee, for the chairman. Does Mike need to be informed you of the right to retain short counsel without delay? You have the right to telephone any lawyer you wish. You have the right to free advice from a delayed lawyer. Do you understand that? Yes. Do you wish to call a lawyer? No. Have you called contact with a lawyer? Well, this building was the start of my nightmare and my family's nightmare as well. Ah, oh, man, it brings back memory. I spent two months working on this place, getting it ready for our construction company. So we ended up renting the building to these business people from Toronto, and they started to grow up in there. It had nothing to do with us, but uh, here we are. Start of a nightmare. Tomorrow we're going to court. If the verdict is guilty, then what's going to happen is the judge is going to sit there and he's going to say how much time your dad will get in jail. So if it is two years, if it's two years and your dad, we come home tomorrow and we say, Dad, the judge told your dad that he's getting um, two years in jail. Well, you won't know that tomorrow. We're going to get the verdict, innocent or guilty. Yeah, but from what I understand... They won't say it. From what Paul says, it'll be m maybe a month before uh, sentencing court happens. Why can we come? The courts aren't for you guys. You don't want to see your dad up there like that and the judge and all the lawyers and... There might be media there. And you know what? Kids shouldn't be in a courtroom, especially Angelo. He's too young. State University is facing criminal charges and has been expelled from school. But the question tonight, is he the perpetrator or is he a victim? DeMario McMurray called campus police after he says a group of young men started harassing him because he's gay. Every time I go to court, I just get a feeling that I could one day go in and not come out. Account of strangulation, they say that it's assault with one intent less than murder, something like that. It's possible that I can have the maximum of 10 years in prison, which is devastating to anyone who has never been in trouble before. My mother and I both thought that I was on my way to 
bigger and better things. I was going to be the first openly gay African-American president of the United States of America. My life had just begun. Well, in case number 14-008-556-01FH, people of the state of Michigan versus Demario Alonzo McMurray. Appearances? May I please support Your Honor, Apollo Brown on behalf of you. And thank you. Good morning, Your Honor. Christopher Kessel on behalf of Mr. McMurray. Your Honor, first with respect to the motion to suppress, Mr. McMurray, through the 14th and 5th Amendment, has a right uh, to not make incriminating statements, to not be questioned without his rights having been read to him. That is, of course, through Miranda and subsequent decisions. There was no, the, the, the response which uh, Mr. McMurray gave was not in response to any specific question that was posed to him, though. Is that true? I don't believe it is, Judge. The, the officer said, tell me what happened, and Mr. McMurray began talking. I know. The officer's questions, I think, in were in general and general enough to determine what had happened. There was a prior incident, and then this was another incident. And I think, based on uh, that inquiry, first of all, I don't think the defendant right. was in custody. Just stop. The defendant in this particular case was the target um, of the uh, arresting police officer. Um, nothing should have been inquired of the defendant relative to the incident. So you may have a legitimate uh, defense here, right? Well, I certainly believe that. Well, yeah, OK, well, if you have a legitimate defense, then it can be tested by a jury. Oftentimes, I look at these uh, young men as if they were my children. And uh, how would I be dealing with them as a father? If someone has committed a very uh, serious crime, even though they're young, I've got no problem with sending them to prison for a substantial period of time. We chose to sell the house. Other people wanted the equity of the house, which I get. It's tough, like you have a lot of emotions bought the house for a reason. You didn't just buy it, you know, as a house and it's an asset. You bought it because you thought it was a home. You thought you were going to raise your kids there. The day I got arrested, it was kind of unexpected. I felt like something was coming, but I didn't know something was coming. Um, I woke up to the sound of police officers banging on my front door. So I think the hardest thing about being arrested for me was calling my dad. I got a call from Courtney, and they were accusing her of misappropriation of funds and so, you know, my initial reaction is, well, obviously they're wrong. I didn't know what happened. I didn't know the magnitude. I didn't know anything would happen until we went to court. And in court, they, they uh, read out the, the accusations and the, what the crime was and stuff, and holy cow. Unbelievable. There's so many questions then. How does this ever happen? I have no answers. Financially, I was drowning. Something just had to give. And once you start, it's like a rush and an addiction. And um, I was just trying to claw my way back out just to see the light again and figure out what was going on and how to get back on track. And um, it just got out of control. No? Sure? Last chance. For someone like me who's never gone through anything like this, you have no idea what to expect. I mean, I feel like I've gone to hell and back already. I mean, I've lost my fiance over it. 
I've embarrassed my family. Like, I feel so awful for them, and I feel even more awful for what's coming at them down the pipe. It's not even full-blown yet. Um, I've essentially kissed my career goodbye, which I worked my ass off to get. Um, I've lost my house, right? Um, We lost a baby in the process between stress and everything else. I hired a prison consultant to come in and talk to him about what to expect and what not to expect. Lee has a very different perspective on prison versus most people. I mean, he's been there for 21 plus years of his own life. Courtney's looking at five years at this point, uh, is what um, the Crown is looking for in her case. She's typical of a lot of my clients. She has absolutely no experience with the system in any way, shape, or form. Um, This is a first-time offense. Uh, She's 30 years of age, or darn near, and this is just so entirely out of her element. And I think she's terrified, certainly from a physical perspective, having no experience to draw from. She's never had a fight in her life. And I think she's fearful of going in there and maybe never being the same person again, losing her sanity in the process. October 24th, 1982. I made a what you would consider an impulsive decision. Decided to snatch a purse randomly. As I was attempting to leave, I encountered a a security guard. I uh, disarmed him. He had a gun, I had a knife. I disarmed him and continued to try to uh, elude him. Didn't want to hurt him. Obviously, he didn't want to hurt me. And uh, as I was attempting to leave, another security guard opened up, shot me in the back, paralyzed me. That was pretty much the, the extent of my criminal career, (laughs) very (laughs) short-lived. Right here, I landed right here. That's where I made my last steps, right here. Changed my whole life. I lost uh, a different future. One decision can cost you more than you're willing to pay. Tomorrow's the big case, the big verdict. We are all hoping and praying, a lot of prayers, that um, he's found not guilty. If he is found guilty, it's going to turn my entire life, my kid's life, upside down. You know what it is about this court system? I'm, I wish I was sure. I wish I could go in there and say, you know what, I'm positive that he's going to be found not guilty and everything's happy and we're good and we're safe and the kids will be fine. And it's, there's nothing like that. It's such unsurety and I hate it. I hate feeling like I have no control over anything that happens in that courtroom. Nothing. Over what the judge is thinking, you know, my kids. I have no control and I'm supposed to be this strong person for them when, I don't know. 
I, I can't do it. I, I'm falling apart in front of them. I'm good to a point, and then behind closed doors with Joe, myself, by ourselves, I'm not good. I need to be able to be really strong for them so that they're not scared. Hello? Yes, honey. Why you gotta go to the bank? Okay. No, you should be able to pull from the other account. Yeah, will you stop crying? Okay, but stop crying. We will get through this, stop crying. Okay? All right, bye. Bye. The city of Detroit always had a history uh, of being a very violent city. We've always led the nation or been among the leaders and when it comes to violent crime. If you've never been incarcerated, I would imagine it's a very terrifying environment uh, because you're, you're coming into a situation where now everything that you do is regulated. Uh, you have no control over what you do at any given point in time. We're going to tell you what time to go to bed, what time to wake up, what time you're going to eat, what time you go to recreation. Uh, we tell you what you eat. You have no say-so in that decision whatsoever. And you come into an environment with a bunch of very dangerous people. You're coming into a situation that is not very pleasant at all. And it shouldn't be. DeMario, as most people, is obviously terrified at the thought of going to prison. You know, obviously you spend five minutes with DeMario and you understand why he might be more nervous than most. Um, if, if he's the subject of, of abuse and harassment on the streets, you can imagine, you know, because of his sexuality, you can imagine the kind of things that might happen to him if he's in prison. The story of my life, the autobiography by DeMario McMurray, My favorite things to do are talk because I love to hear my voice. I love to sing and write gospel music because it prepares me for my future. Plus, it keeps me out of trouble. My favorite TV show is Charmed. I like this show because of the witches and the magic they do. My favorite movie is The Gospel. I enjoy this movie because it's about prayer and the power of forgiveness. Um, DeMario also goes on to mention the th uh, goals that he was setting for himself at this time. And he wanted to be a lawyer, or if that didn't pan out, a gospel singer. DeMario started getting bullied, I think, when he was in the fifth grade. I am most proud of DeMario for standing up for himself. I really admire him for that. Beach black took a stroll down Dexter Avenue while I was walking. I seen this little girl I knew. I said, hey, little Sally, why The day of the incident on September 8th, I called my mother. She broke down. It was like a scene from a movie. They processed me and they booked me. I had to take a, a mug shot. 
that had to sit in the cell, like behind bars, for an entire week. It made me feel like I was human or I was just this otherworldly creature. Just, I could never, I couldn't stay there another day. I'd rather not be on Earth, period, than to sit one more day in jail with someone telling me when I have to go to bed or calling me out my name like I'm not an actual human. It's just been tough today. Just moving has been brutal. Parole-wise, I have to be out tonight. You know you'll be looking back at this one day, um, and you'll be stronger for it. And I also know you feel at the root of this always that it's that, that you brought yourself here and that you wish you could go back and change things that you cannot. So I know it's hard. Man. You know, you're doing everything in your power to make the best of this and to handle it. And I know it doesn't feel like it, but it will pass. I know. I just have to get there. I'm just not... I just don't know how to get there. Like, I feel like I'm stuck on this island, and I can see the boat, but I don't know how to get to the boat. Absolutely. Initially, there wasn't a lot of communication as to what actually happened. You know, she was very, held her cards very close to the vest and, and, and wasn't openly, openly communicative about what went on. And then when, once she hooked up with a, with a legal counsel, then the doors were shut. I'd ask her questions and say, Dad, I can't talk to you about that. It's, uh, it's all confidential. You know, I, I've got two daughters and, and they're both my best friends. And, and here's one of my best friends shutting the door on me. You haven't brought this up, but I know this also represents six years of, of you and Mark, basically, um, about closing, right? A chapter. Well, and I don't think the Mark and stuff's going to hit me right away. I think the Mark stuff will hit me later on, like next week or something else. Like, I'm so terrified about the peanut thing tomorrow. Like, I can't even... I'm not even on to Mark yet. Like, I just... You know, at least Mark's, like, pushed me away and he's kept distance and stuff, but with Peanut, like, even packing, I can't leave a room. She comes running after me, so... Well, now, she's gonna miss you, too. I'm scared if I let the walls down, though, I won't get through this. Yeah. It could be fed time, it could be two years. Now, even if they ask for more on you, three to five, that doesn't mean the judge has to give you more than two years and can still give you house arrest. Don't worry, Paul, whatever it is, it is. I know you're worried. I can see it in your face. It's OK. Mm -hmm. This case uh, has bothered me from the get-go. Because I told you it wasn't going to be easy. I, I know. But when you're friends with somebody, it just bothers me. When I, in this particular case, the way I'm, I'm starting to see the... I wasn't sure at the beginning. You know, I, I didn't know, know you, you from Adam, and I didn't know, you know, it looks pretty bad. But as I got to know you and I got to see more of the case, I believe every word you say, and I, it bothers me. And I don't... And I, you're innocent, and I should have been able to prove it, and I'm upset. And we didn't. Hey, if we don't, don't say that yet. Don't say that yet. You never know. It's gonna be great, don't worry. That judge saw a whole different story. He saw it the way it was no, presented he saw, he saw by the Crown. a whole different story. A whole different story that he guy saw. He saw the way it was presented by the Crown. And because on the Joe scene, Zambito maintains his innocence. I know he's put himself through a lot in all these years. It's not easy. It's been almost five years that he's been carrying this on his shoulders, looking at his children, knowing in the back of his mind what might happen, and now it's going to happen. So I suppose the quicker it happens, the better it is, and get it over with now. You have to tell the probation officer that although I'm not guilty, 
I can understand why the judge is thinking what he does. No, I cannot understand. Fuck that. Lou, it's a, I'm not lying. There's no uh, reason for me to lie. Oh, God. Yes, there is, because you need to be able to get house arrest. If you don't get house arrest, our lives are ruined. Do you understand what you have to do now? You have to play the game now. Yeah. Okay. It's no longer about telling the truth and defending yourself, because that didn't work. Every single day I prepare for the worst. I could possibly lose every single thing. I've already lost a lot. I lost the scholarships that I got, I lost tuition money, I lost everything. I, I lost basically my entire life. And with prison, I lose all possible freedom. And there's no coming back from that. On September 8th, 2014, did you have some contact with the DeMario McMurray? Yes, I did. Myself, along with other Wayne State officers, were called to one of the Wayne State dormitories. What was your purpose for going to uh, the dormitory? To investigate a, a assault and battery that just occurred. Okay. Another unit of mine that arrived at the same time I did, uh, they spoke with the victim while I went to the third floor to speak with the other half of the incident, Mr. Uh, McMurray. Had you had any contact with Mr. McMurray prior to September the 8th? I guess at that, this point I'll object, Your Honor. I don't know how that's relevant to whether or not my client was advised of his Miranda rights when he was speaking to this Well, officer. I guess we don't know. We'll have to see as to whether or not there's some relevancy associated with it. The objection's overruled. Thank Please you, Judge. continue. And what was the contact that you had? Mr. McMurray had reported that he had been a victim of a hate crime. No further questions. Just so we're clear, before you began asking Mr. McMurray these questions, you never read him his Miranda rights, is that correct? Correct, I did not read him his rights because he was not under arrest at that time. Was Mr. McMurray free to leave? No, he was not. Thank you, I have nothing else, Judge. All right, you may step down, officer. Mm -hmm. Captain Steve Kinkle, Wayne State Hi, Jasmine, it's Courtney Hills calling, how are you? Hi, good. That's good. I'm just calling um, because, as we discussed, I had to advise you of my address change since I've moved today. Okay, so you've moved as of today, then? Yep, so as of tonight, I'll be sleeping at my mom's house. Yeah. All right, uh, I'll note that in the system, and then uh, your phone number is still going to be remaining the same, right? Yes. Okay, no other changes? Will you be contacting me, or will my new parole officer be contacting me then going forward? Um, I, I will give you further instructions um, as to who you will be reporting to. Um, I need to. I'm so I need to sorry. Report. You ready? Judge, I think this case falls perfectly within the, the rubric of custodial and interrogation, and I would ask that any statements made by Mr. McMurray be suppressed as a result uh, of a violation of his Fifth Amendment rights. Thank you. All right. Mr. McMurray had been a victim just uh, a week or two prior because these people have some relationship together. So when the officer asked Mr. McMurray what happened, 
Mr. McMurray went on to say, well, the two girls came into my room. I tried to put them out of my room. And then at some point, I blanked out, and I had my hands around her neck, and I was strangling her. Um, as the court denies the motion to suppress the statement that was made by the defendant. Judge, you know, other than the officer, I mean, he, he's only going to say person of interest. But okay. if some keep, if, keep talking. If, if I may, Judge, if, if there's a victim. I'm being facetious with you. I know, Judge. It's over. Thank you, sir. The so-called tough on crime initiatives have not worked. We still live in the most violent country in the world that is westernized. Now, I'm not suggesting for a moment that people who commit crimes should not be incarcerated, but I think that we are making an investment in the wrong place. The investment is going on the back end, building more prisons and uh, increasing incarceration, when I think it should go on the front end by trying to prevent people from becoming involved in crime. So I'm a strong proponent of crime prevention and investing your money up front to keep people out of trouble. If it weren't for the fact that I'm very confident still that we can work this out, to the misdemeanor that gets wiped off your record, I'd be saying we should do what's called an interlocutory appeal, which means send this up to the Court of Appeals, because I don't think there's any question that, you know, you were the suspect, you know, the, the person of interest. I don't care what they call you. Obviously, they went to this place because they were alleging you had assaulted this girl. And then they went and asked you questions. And it doesn't, you know, it matters if the question is, did you have peanut butter and jelly for lunch today? Because that's not liable to get you to say, Oh, I did all kinds of bad things, but when you say what happened, that's liable to, you know, you tell them what happened. That's li you're liable to say things that you have a right not to have to say. What we'll do is, is we'll sit tight until the first week of January is over, um, and I'll if we're going to be back here on the 16th at 8:30, you'll hear from me a few days before then. Okay. Okay. All right, tomorrow. Have a good holiday. Okay. Thank you. Forward. So the, the list I have here from today and from what we've done in the past couple of days, support letters. We've got, what, a dozen confirmed? Is that accurate with you as well? Haircut tomorrow. Uh, yeah. And we know why we're doing this. Manageability, potential lockdowns, lack of shower time, grooming needs, plus eliminating any chance of somebody being able to use that uh, physically against you, grabbing your hair. Okay, travel to the jail this afternoon. You know, I'm six foot three. Lee's told me going in, like, you're going to be a target. And it's not because you're white, it's not because you're female, it's none of that. It's you're six foot three, you're a presence in there, and nobody knows who you are. He goes, You've got no reputation, you're a first time offender, people are going to test you. I'll set up two more contacts for you from former female inmates uh, with, with decades of experience. Prison can change people. People become emotionally devoid. They, they put a mask on to survive. You toughen up. You don't allow yourself to cry. You don't allow yourself to feel this. You don't smile. You do all these different things because this is what you need to do in your surroundings. Now, as time passes, unfortunately, what, what can and often does happen is this no longer is an act, and this becomes the person. And so the longer this goes on, the more of a risk you run of this person actually losing a big part of who they were. It's just tough. Like, I have to become someone that I'm not to survive when I'm in there and then change back to the person that I am, but not lose the person that I am when I'm in there. Yeah. I don't, like, it's a lot. I don't... But if we look at it from a tactical perspective, if I know. we use this, I mean, no differently than, and we were talking about this, but um, preparing for a movie role. And I know it's not the same, but this is a role of a lifetime if you look at it like that. And it's one that's really important for you. You feel confident that you're going to be able to put on a poker face. <laughs> Right now, no. All right, well, that's something we're going to really work on. Yeah, there is a possibility he might go to prison. I think he'll be like six months or 15 months, something like that. But honestly, I don't think it'll be that big of a problem. I think we'll just get through it, you know? as a family. Next month will be uh, pretty scary for my family and uh, hopefully we'll get closer and 
you know, have more family time and movie night and um, family dinner. That'd be cool. And it'll just be hard, you know. It's kind of hard seeing the guy that you love go to jail. I mean, I don't really care if he's innocent or guilty. I just want to get it over with. My biggest worry is if he goes to jail for a long time, like two years, five years, three years. I don't really miss him, but if it's like eight months, I don't really care about it because I just want to get this over with. It's been four years since it happened. I took pictures of my toys that I don't play with, and I just went on my iPod and posted them on Kijiji for money. When they get some money, I want to give some to my dad. Uh, he's having trouble with taxes, mortgages, bills, and all that. So it's kind of hard. I don't really think he's going to jail, but he is, so what can you do? What, are you, what did you do today? When I went to the doctor, I thought that the hand was mm -hmm. And me and my mommy got to go with the, I got to go dead, because they gave me a tap on my leg. Ready? Yes. Hold on. When a person is incarcerated, they can't be a father, they can't be a son, an uncle, a friend, a husband. There are all kinds of opportunities that they don't have to be involved in the social fabric of, of the community or the lives of the people uh, that care about them and that they care about. So it has a dramatic impact, especially on young children when you know that, you know, dad or mom are incarcerated. You can only see them uh, on, a, on an infrequent uh, visit, and the visit sometimes is pretty frightening and humiliating, especially to young children. That high incarceration rate is not good for a community. Ramona and Beezus? Yeah, I love that. Uh-huh. My son going to, to prison is not an option for me. I can't. Couldn't handle that. If my son is convicted, I think a big part of me will die. Because I did not raise him for this. I did. And I try not to think about it. And like I said, I just have to pray a lot. And I just hope that he doesn't go and everything works out. are certainly heading into a world that is dark, that is scary. You know, being killed in prison, dying in prison, rape. I think that's very scary for most people to, to sit there and try to visualize how they would make it through it. Walk for a sec. All right. You oh, want to just walk shit. on your own? 
Just give me a fuck. Okay. We've joked a lot. Know. You know me today, and what am I? I'm after 25 years of sitting in those shitholes. I know. But if you do come here, it'll take months. It's eight I'm months guessing. Of hell, though. Yeah, eight months of, you know what? Yeah, okay. Like, slow, slow, <laughs> slow time. Every day being the same. I don't know how much they use the outside here. It doesn't look like. You would think this would be yard time right now? I don't know. Fuck. So you'd be killing a winter here. I'm not going to do well in there. Fourteen years is a long time. And it was uh, terrifying, to say the least. They put me in a segregation cell. N no accommodations for somebody like in my condition. And, and when I would have to take a shower, it was just a regular stall shower, big shower. No bench, no nothing to sit on. And I actually had to crawl under the shower head and the officer would turn it on and I would have to crawl on the floor, get out my chair and crawl into the shower to, to wash up. And that was one of the most difficult times of my life. I don't know how I survived that, but I did. I made it in made up in my mind at that time that I would. I got up and showered. <sighs> Every day. Hello? Hi. Jamara. Yes. Hey, it's Chris. How's it going, man? It's good. How are you? Good, good, all right. Well, coincidentally, when I was leaving the office yesterday, I ran into Apollo, and she said she actually just got out of a meeting uh, with a complaining witness on your case. And, you know, she said, well, she's real upset because she feels like, you know, she's not someone who hates gay people or anything like that, like you guys are friends. But, you know, she also understands that maybe her version of events was a little exaggerated uh, to the police. So the moral of the story is after the conversation she had with her, Apollo is going to be authorized to offer you the misdemeanor, which is what we wanted in the first place. So it was, uh, it was a good day. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, so it's a good day, okay? It's a great day. Mm -hmm. So I will see you uh, tomorrow at 8.30. 
Okay. And, you know, we'll go in front of the judge, we'll knock this out, and, you know, we'll, we'll get... I, I know what you enjoy seeing Judge Callahan, but uh, we'll try to get you out of the way. Definitely. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sounds good tomorrow. I will see you tomorrow morning, okay? Okay, thank you. All right, have a good day. No problem. No you problem. too. What's wrong with tomorrow, you You didn't want to plead, have to plead guilty. I understand, I do. But you know I'm here for you. But it's just really tough right now for him. Because his whole life got changed upside down. And everyone else that was involved was able to go on with their lives. And it's just not fair. did you want to put in that letter? I put down that you're a church yeah, goer. Okay, That's so important. On. I put down... I don't think anything um, you say to him is going to matter right now. Well, Sophia, Carlo... They're sleeping, honey. Did you give Dad a kiss? All right. Oh, I love you, kid. I love you. What do you think? What's the verdict today? No prediction? No. No? <coughs> Sophia. I'm going now, okay? Give me a kiss. Give me a kiss. Give me a hug. Love you. Love you too. I know, go back to sleep. Carlo. Carlo. I'm going, okay? always follow me everywhere I go. Unless you're facing 10 years in prison, you won't really understand how I feel. The United States have the largest percentage of its people in prison than any place on the planet, yet we have more crime than any place else. That's a contradiction. It's not working. Jail should be for people that we're afraid of, not that we're mad at. I, I can only imagine what a nightmare this is for her, what she's, and how terrified she is about the whole thought process of, of having to go to prison and, and spend a day, much less a year or two years in prison. It, it's going to be a nightmare, but it's going to be hopefully a nightmare that she gets through. I'm not sure she'll be a better person for it, but she'll have done her time and, and we can move on and pick up the pieces and try and make the best of what we can do. My girls are everything to me. And uh, when these walls went up, 
when these walls went up, uh, a big part of me, I lost a big part of me. And so um, when I was approached about doing this and approached about being a part of this, uh, and my initial reaction was, no, I can't, you know, I'm not putting myself out there. And, but then in, in thinking about it, I, I, I had to put myself out there for Courtney. Sorry. Okay. I had to let her know I was in her corner. All right, today's the date and time scheduled for sentencing of Mr. McMurray. Have you had the opportunity of reviewing the pre-sentence investigation report? We do find it to be factually accurate with no additions, corrections, or deletions. Mr. McMurray, is that correct? Yes. Okay. Ms. Brown, do you wish to say anything further to me on behalf of the people before I impose sentencing of Mr. McMurray? The complainant is here, and she'd also like to address the court, Your Honor. Absolutely. Please have her step forward. How is this... Uh, uh, behavior of uh, Mr. McMurray impacted or affected you? Um, it definitely impacted me a lot. What he did was intentional. It wasn't on accident. And I feel like, as like he even said, that he would do it again. I don't feel like it was something that was, it was planned. Okay. All right. And you believe that the resolution of this case as has been worked out by the prosecuting attorney meets with your approval? Yeah. All right. Judge, with respect to, <clears throat> excuse me, some of Ms. Anakwa's statements, I would just point out to the court um, that while Mr. McMurray does have no excuse for his actions, that these actions occurred because Ms. Anakwa arrived at my client's place of residence. Look, this no. is not the time to I understand, Judge. defend your client's uh, behavior. He's already admitted having committed a very serious uh, crime. I understand. And uh, so um, castigating or denigrating or criticizing in any way, shape, or form at this particular juncture of a victim of a crime is, in my opinion, ludicrous. All right, Mr. McMurray, it is the uh, sentence of this court that you be placed on probation for a period of two years. You're to undergo a psychological evaluation and treatment. I want you to obtain uh, 40 hours of employment uh, per week or be a full-time student. Do you understand? Good luck. Thank you very much. Okay, you're all set, right? Not really. You're good, don't worry. Am I? I don't know. Yeah. You'll be able to do this. 15th and 30th is the mortgage. Uh, Colin takes it out automatically. Correct. You know what I'm worried about, Joe? The Collect insurance. the rent from the what lady. What do I do about the insurance? Do I call them and re get a re Yes, you're going to have to redo it. I'm to do that today. Um, uh, second is. Uh, House on Wildwood. Why is something so stupid after ruining my life so bad? Well, from every negative, there's a positive. No, I don't see any positives yet. <laughs> there's a know. couple. Where? OK, so you made a really close friends. OK, yeah, I, that, denying that, no, no. They, they're... OK, there's a positive. Yes. Um, I found out who my real friends are. You found out who your real friends are. Uh, your company. Still still exists yes. that's good so you found out and you found out a lot of people wrote letters for you so they they you know they really yeah. do think highly of you mm -hmm. uh what else let's say hang on i'm trying to think <laughs> not much else trust me okay maybe there's not a lot but joe well i still have you so that's a good one that's our time is it yeah what time is it
I felt like I was just another African-American kid who messed up and ended up in front of a judge for the first time. And I feel like that's all they will ever see me as until I do something to change that. I may not be the president now, but I can still make a difference in the same way that the president could make a difference. I might be on probation, but I didn't lose because I'm not broken. All I can say, man, is it's beautiful to be free. Just to be able to go places and do things that you took for granted at one time. I took freedom for granted at one time, and I'll never do that again. I'm just grateful to be alive, man. <laughs> Glad to be here.